welcome everyone to the 10 days teaching hour. It's exciting everyone as we, can you believe it, already um, seven full days uh, moving into the uh, eighth day. Um, we're really excited. I know many of you already have stirrings and wonderful stories to share. And some of us also may be tired. You know, there's just, it's pretty normal. Just want to encourage you. There's a, uh, you know, there's sometimes 10 days is a little bit like a roller coaster as far as our journey, um, because, you know, we're, we're, we're putting in a lot more time than we usually will. But the amazing thing is, is as we get into different focuses, suddenly the Holy Spirit just shows up and just just takes us and refreshes us and brings us into a new place. So uh, we're very excited to, today uh, to have another focus on uh, our art and revelation. And I and I know our sister Anya is going to introduce some very special friends to us. Thanks so much, Grant. Um, I think we're in for such a treat um, today, just having Grant and Heidi Mitchell with us. Um, they're from the beautiful Karoo in South Africa, and I just want to share a little bit about each of them. Um, Guy is an artist, and, and um, Heidi is a pianist and, and a composer, and they use the power of art and music through the Holy Spirit to engage your ears, your eyes, your heart, and your soul. They have ministered extensively in South Africa and across many, many parts of the world, bringing the body of Christ into an intimate um, space with Father God. And they've now answered the call to a new mandate, uh, and that is to help the next generation to tap into the Holy Spirit's living, vibrant creativity. They use their skills in art and music respectively, and the anointing the Father has blessed with, uh, them with, trusting the Holy Spirit to activate his unique thumbprint in each child, teaching them to worship in spirit and in truth, and knowing the sound of the voice of the Father. Guy and Heidi, it's such a blessing to have you with us, and um, I'm going to hand over to you now. Blessings. Wow, it's such a privilege to be with you guys. Oh, Lord, I'd just I'd love to open in prayer. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for every light bearer that is part of this meeting, every son and daughter of yours, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, they have tuned in because your spirit has summons them. Lord, so may you speak, may you, may you move through each of us in power. And I just as I'm feeling the sun on my face, Lord, I just know that you're wanting to shine with glory. And um, that scripture in Isaiah 60, where it says, arise and shine, for my glory is arising upon you. Thank you, Lord, that you're calling each one of us into our fullness, into the fullness of our authority as sons and daughters of the living God, that you're calling forth a new generation that I, I just see these, these powerful dynamic from six years old, carrying the glory, carrying the spirit, um, that there's no time to, to wake up at 30, that the time is short and you're calling us to to raise up the next generation. So thank you, Lord, as we minister, may you encourage everyone and may you stir our hearts into action. Yes, amen. So I'm gonna hand over to Heidi to share a bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's so wonderful to see so many new faces and yeah, it's a privilege to, to be with you all. Um, yeah, so Guy and I are in a ministry called Revelations in Art, and we've been married for nearly 19 years. And two years into our marriage, um, God called us um, to lay everything down and wait on him because we had normal jobs, if you want to put it that way. And Guy had studied art, but he was in graphic design, and I was a full-time music teacher. And we were just saying to the Lord, surely there's got to be more than this. And when we, when we were on a holiday together, Father said, lay everything down and wait on me. And uh, what a radical instruction. And, you know, we were, we were wondering, what does that mean to wait on him? And um, he certainly clarified himself. And in that time of waiting, um, we were basically gradually lost everything that we had in our possession. Um, guy, the guy let go of all his clients and 
just was waiting on God at home. I resigned from my teaching job. Um, and so in this time of waiting, our possessions became fewer and fewer, and we were expecting the uh, windows of heaven to open, and they did, but in a different kind of way for provision. Um, and yeah, so um, in this time, God, Guy always says one can only pray so much. And in this time of waiting, um, he picked up a paintbrush for the first time in 10 years. And God began to give him visions from scripture and specifically from the book of Revelation. And the first painting he does was from Revelation 19, where Jesus was returning on the white horse. Um, and he did a small little painting of this. And it was beautiful, wonderful, great. And um, I was at up until that point, totally bound by sheet music when I played the piano. I could play Mozart, I could play you a Chopin etude, but don't take the book away, I would be lost. Um, and Guy would often ask me, what can you play, you know, and I would say, but I've just played you my Mozart, but he, I knew the Holy Spirit through him was asking of something for, for something different and something more, but I was just lost. I didn't know what he was requiring of me. And one day, um, Guy put this painting that he'd done um, on top of the piano. And um, I shut the piano lounge door and I said, all right, Holy Spirit, it's you and me. What is this thing? What is this new thing? And in the same space where I discern the voice of the Father, in that space where I receive prophetic word, I began to hear music. And I began to hear the sound of these horses running. And it was this urgent urgency about it. I said, okay, Lord, I hear this. What do I do now? He said, now you put your hands on the keyboard and you play. And it was to me like stepping off a cliff. I had to let go of everything I knew. I'd been playing the piano since I was six years old. Um, I'd never played without sheet music. And it was truly um, liberating. I just stepped off that cliff and I began to play. And this incredible piece of music came. And it brought the painting to life in a way that I cannot describe. This horse we were, it was live. We were in that scene. We were riding with, the, with Jesus. We were the part of the saints. It was just incredible. Um, and I was so excited. I ran outside to the studio to go and fetch Guy. And I thought, oh my goodness, what if I can't repeat this? But the way the Holy Spirit began to give it to me is every time Guy finished a painting, the Holy Spirit would give me a very specific piece of music. And it was as if I could download it. Like when you download a track from a, from a computer, it was in the same way downloaded into my spirit and so we began to receive this new wineskin and this new ministry um and then after nine months of of a very stripping time um we our journey came to an end and this ministry had been born but we then had a music school for eight years it was um we were living in fishhook in the cape and it was a very secular setup we were part of a, a secular school and although we ministered as much as we could it wasn't fully um, fully spirit led uh, you know you're limited when you're in a, in a school that's part of a system uh, and so we would minister with the art and the music on weekends and holidays and then in 2015 father said we're going full-time so since 2015 we've ministered full-time with this art and music and um the, we've done the tabernacle of moses um we we, we did that for three years where father Hel let us um take people through the tabernacle from the brazen altar all the way into the Holy of Holies, an incredible journey of through the repentance and the, um, the spirit. Mm -hmm. And then the beginning of last year of January, um, we began to hear the shift, you know, when in, in the desert, when the Israelites were following the cloud, when the cloud moved, they had to move when it stopped, they had to stop. And we, we realized, oh, the clouds on the move. And so we said, okay, Lord, our ears are attentive, we are listening, where are we moving? And all we saw was the children. And God says, it's time to call in the next generation. Are you willing? And so we've basically let go of the ministry um, as we knew it and shifted to saying, okay, Lord, how does this look now? And I have to be honest, it feels the same way as that day when I sat at the piano um, and didn't know what was going to happen out, outside of me putting my hands on the keyboard. And um, that father is saying he's doing a very new thing. And so what Guy and I are doing now um, is working with the children once more, but he is in the same way as I had to let go of all that sheet music I also have to let go of any teaching framework because what he's doing now is not teaching. It's an equipping and an activation and a releasing of the Holy Spirit in these children. Um, yeah, as we've never seen before. 
And um, we've toured extensively this year throughout South Africa. So we did a tour along the garden route. We we ministered to children in groups of five to 10 year old and then 11 to 18 year old. Um, we have a big van and we load um, xylophones. I don't know if you know what those are. They are those wooden instruments that you play in, and they're easy to turn into what's called a pentatonic. You take all the false notes out and then all the children are in tune. <laughs> and um, we, I take my keyboard, guy takes his guitar and we take art equipment and we allow the Holy Spirit to flow. And we don't have the full picture yet, but what we've begun to experience and what God is showing us with these children is extraordinary. God is raising up a, a generation of fearless children that mm. are bold and understand the times that we are in. Um, and they know where we're going. And Father said, you just need to facilitate because these children are actually going to lead. You just need to facilitate. Um, do you want to speak about the temple and the children being? Yeah. So being an artist, one of the revelation points in when when I realized that there was a place for artists in the in the church, in the body of Christ, in the kingdom, was when I was reading when God anointed the artists to create the tabernacle. And, and when I read that, I realized there's a place for the gifts that he has placed in me. And and that's when I I studied art and um after an incredible journey through cancer and and God divinely healed me. Um, and so I, I put myself fully into art and all I was interested in is, is how God's used art through the centuries and how he wanted to use me. But what's, what's interesting about the temple being musicians and, and being an artist, um, when God, when the artists were anointed so thank you, Lord, for the artists you want to anoint. And I just feel that there's a generation coming forth. Um, I just see prophecy coming out in these incredible poems. I see plays. I see just artworks. God wants to pour out his beauty and his extravagance in us. He wants to express his gospel in a fresh way. Um, so, so there's visual artists, there's movie makers, there's yeah, thank you, Lord, that you're raising up. So the art was there. It was in the temple. God had raised up the artists and, and anointed them with his ruach, his spirit. And then the musicians took up their place. And as we moved in one accord, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And so, so lovely looking on the screen and there's so many faces there's so many people who yeah that you are the living stones the temple of the living god and um so for one he's he's raised us up and many people on, in this in this zoom meeting to be that light to be that glory to carry his presence to ignite um that glory of the lord in the temple but he's also calling forth this new generation and and so so what is exciting is is when he started highlighting this new generation and so many people will speak very negatively and they say what's going to happen with this new generation all they want to do is look on their phones and play computer games but god has been highlighting he said he said as we he sent us out he said go and find the gold and in the old testament there were what was called the Levites. They were divided into the musicians, the priests. They kept the temple. Um, and, and so he says, go look for those people that are going to carry the glory, that are going to carry the weight of his presence. Um, and so so even right now that this, we, we want to stand with you, Father, and we want to stand in one accord, everyone who's online on this meeting. And we want to call for those, the gold, the glory carriers, the ones that are going to stand in their position and release the sound of unity and the body is going to be filled with the smoke of your glory, that your robe fill the tabernacle. Yes, Lord. So, 
we wanted to play a clip is now a good time yeah. so we wanted to play a clip we uh, initially when we were invited on this meeting we wanted to play live and then we saw the technical issues but we're going to play a clip and lord may you just anoint this clip um and and so Haiti is playing on the piano and you'll see some of my artwork and it's calling forth the prophets, this, the seers. Um, and I just want you to just track with and just be prayerful. What we've learned about releasing the sound is as you engage your faith, it would be lovely if we we're all in the same room, but I'm asking for that supernatural Holy Spirit to be in us each. And that he's, and what, what I want to really mention, what is a beautiful thing is when when Haiti started to play in this way where she just hear let's Holy Spirit play. Um, and Father said to her, can I play the piano? Because I don't often get a chance. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to hear in that music is Ruach of a Father just releasing a sound from heaven through Haiti. And, and, and as you listen to that sound, I pray that those who are, are seers or prophets or prayer warriors, intercessors, that you will start to intercede and press with the sound and hear what the Father's declaring. Yeah, so thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Um, yeah, so 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 that's just um, a snippet of what Guy and I do when we minister. And, you know, I think for every one of us that's been called to shift to the children in the way we've, we have been, everyone listening and is part of this today is focused on the children in some way or other. The reason I shared the part of the testimony of feeling like you're stepping off a cliff is I really believe Father's asking us to be so free in what is what's coming next that the maturity that we carry and the tools we have in our belt are crucial. But we have to be so flexible and so flexy for the new wine because this the wineskin will tear if we're not willing to flex with the Holy Spirit in this outpouring that's to come. And the children are already flexed. That's why Father's using them. They don't need to, to do what we've got to do. So for many of us, it's a shift because it's hard to let go of the old way of doing things. It's hard to let go of things that are comfortable and work. And you know, so last year when God asked us to give up our ministry as we knew it, uh, you know, you have to make that choice because you say yes or no. So for whoever is asking and prompting and, and, and you feel that discomfort to know that his provision is so in what's coming. Um, his eyes are on these children in, to such a degree that there is such fruit. You, you can't possibly lose out or be sorry. We have experienced some of the most extraordinary heavenly worship in these two tours we've done. Um, you know, with the older group, the 11 to 18 year old group that I described, <clears throat> some of them are already quite proficient on instruments. So we asked them to bring their instruments with them. And then we lead them into that space. And um, Guy was a worship leader for many, many, many years in some of the very big churches. And I've been part of worship also for many years. But neither of us have ever experienced anything so sweet and, and so pure as we did with those children as we moved into that kind of worship, this new wineskin of worship. It's There they were no words as such, but... It was extraordinary that the children did not want to leave. The hour and a half would be up and Guy would say, amen, but there was no stopping them. They just would continue and they didn't, they didn't want to stop. Some of them were in tears and crying and saying, um, is, this, is this the only time I'm ever going to be doing this in my whole life? Some of them would say, and they would weep when they knew we weren't remaining in their town, that we didn't live there. So there's such a hunger for the children to be in that type of presence. And so we're saying, thank you, Father, that this is just the beginning for us. But what we really appreciate um, and what we would, we would appreciate pray for as it's for us tonight is just to know the extent of the wineskin. How does it look going forward? And, and, and what you know, that we'll have all the tools we need, everything that we need um, equipping wise. I'd like to share two prophetic words that some of the young men wrote on us during our tours. Some of the young men were not comfortable with drawing or didn't want to and they they wrote quite mm. a few wrote and those prophetic declarations are just as powerful as a, a prophetic painting mm. the first one is a boy um a farmer's son he came with his leather shoes and his um his um khaki pants 
um, 18 year old boy. He was hungry for, for the, for the Lord. And this is what he wrote. The war drums are sounding. The war has begun now and it's raging on into the unseen about the hearts of those who need to come home. So pick up the armor and stand your ground. Let your light shine and let the darkness flee. The king is on his way to rage an unsettled war against the unseen, waiting to be revealed. You that have received, you must give. Mm. And then what we experienced, um, you saw that one painting briefly of the horses running um, in, in like a fire. It was, um, it's, it's a painting guy painted um, as a response to a lady in America who had a vision of the whole of America being cleansed with a Malachi three fire, um, a cleansing fire from north to south, east to west. And she shared this vision with Guy um, and she saw apostolic forerunners running with the glory bathed. Um, if we were a bit better at the Zoom, you could share that image, see if you can find it. Mm -hmm. But um, and these riders are running bathed in the glory into the darkness with a fire from side to side. And in the wake behind are these flowers. And and so many of the children um, relate to this. And this is the image that would stand out to them. Um, and they relate to riding in that darkness, but the, the fearlessness and the boldness that's in them. Um, this is the one here. Next one. Yeah. Yeah. I just um I just want to read um the, the second prophecy I want to read that was from a young man who was 16 year old. Um a line of Christ's armored saints face evil with courage that doesn't faint, filled with his glory and power, with his presence that makes devils cower. He will return to the earth for the final judgment, before to heaven all believers with him will ascend. We gave our hearts and made him Lord, and for us in heaven the untold gifts soared. By his power we must stand and fight, resisting the devil that tempts by night. That we might be killed and slain, Jesus first, for us, his life downlaid. Should we die before our time, we will onwards, upwards, heaven climb. As long as we keep our eyes on him alone, we will become like a blinding light that in the darkness shine. Mm. Yeah. So hopefully you guys are seeing this image. Um, yeah, as you can see, the rioters are riding fiercely into that darkness, um, fearlessly and fiercely into that darkness. And um, I just see um, the horses in this case, obviously, obviously we know that so often the Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as the dove and all that. But in this case, I just see um, the horses, the power of the Holy Spirit just carrying us. We just got to stay on board, hold on tight, and we charging into the darkness. And as those hooves break up the hardened soil, um, just preparing the way. And and as you can see, as and, and the hooves hit and there's cleansing fire, cleansing fire. One of the things the Lord's been saying to us about this, this move of his spirit is there's going to be a breakout of the fear of the Lord. And so as you, as you see those that fire breaking forth, it's cleansing, there's repentance, there's a, an awakening to the awe and the wonder and the glory of the Lord. And, um, and as you can see, uh, the, as, as the horses break open that ground, uh, making space for the seeds to fall and the new life to come. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're calling us all to ride in this victorious ride and as you can see the horses are quite spread and not of all of us are aware some of us feel quite isolated alone unsure but we're charging forth and as you can see we all moving together and there's this incredible new life um that's emerging in our wake yeah so thank you lord thank you lord thank you for the new life thank you lord I just feel that some people, when they look at the situation in the world, it can be overwhelming. But I just want you to look at this image and just know that out of this darkness, the Lord will burst forth. 
when the enemy floods into the school systems, into the politics, the Lord will raise up a standard. His remnant will ride forth in power that he hasn't finished writing um, the story. And I just feel for many of you um, have concerns around your children. And I just I feel the Lord saying, trust me, I haven't finished writing the story. So thank you, Lord, for bringing every child. I just see many parents on, on this, this Zoom meeting and I, I intercede for your children. Lord, may they come into their fullness. May they ride in your splendor and in your glory. May you break off every shackle. Mm, amen, amen. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, I think that's that's more or less what we wanted to share. And um, yeah, I know that there's some precious intercessors on the group and we, we are so... We, we are like two sponges wanting to absorb every prayer that's willing to be prayed and saying, Father, strengthen us, give us vision, mm. give us what we need mm. to fulfill this mandate that he's yes, given Lord. us. And may we reach every child that has to be reached. May we ignite every child that needs to be ignited. May we reach and you know, access and have the strength and the energy to ride. So, yes, thank you. Mm.